everybody, it's Travelling Jones, and today is Monday, the I believe it's the 8th of May, 2023, and I'm here with our lovely, lovely local Ofa group, and I'll ask them to introduce themselves, if you wouldn't mind, please. Hi, I'm Andrea from Vancouver, Canada. <clears throat> I am Jennifer from the Southwest in England. Uh, Louis from uh, Taloyuak in Northern Canada. And, and Julie from Billings, Montana, USA. Thank you. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about fasting. So I'm, I'm holding this book up here because it's a book which has been written by Jason, uh, Jason uh, Fung and uh, Megan Ramos and Eve with Eve Mayer as well. So if fasting wasn't something important, there certainly wouldn't be that much information about it. And the nice thing about fasting is that we've all had some experience of, of doing it. So we're going to open the, 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 the meeting up and everybody's going to talk about fasting, you know, that how, how they feel about it. Is it something that, that they do? Um, has it helped them? And why maybe it's something that you might want to consider doing. So I'll open the floor up, whoever wants to go first. I'll start. All right. <clears throat> yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the um, the eating window part of fasting, so that um, I, I, a lot of people I think I don't think really understand why some of us are eating like one meal a day or whatever. And what we're doing is we're extending the window that we fast in and reducing the eating window. So by reducing the eating window, you can do that gradually, or you can do it overnight. Um, you get a much longer period of the day when your body is able to um, to cleanse, to lose weight, uh, and, and to rest the gut. So um, for those of you who are new to, to low carb, you, you may want to start by just reducing your eating window by stopping eating like at seven o'clock at night, by um, moving your breakfast up until it's basically your lunch. And so you're eating two meals a day. And then maybe slowly by moving dinner and lunch closer together. So you're only eating one meal a day. And it doesn't matter what time that meal is, as long as you keep it consistent. Um, so it, you you don't even need to, to do any low carb eating to start with if you just want to, to close that window so that um, you're eating in a much smaller time frame, and that will really help. You will lose weight even if you don't go low carb, but going low carb is going to make a huge difference. Of course, it's going to, yeah. it is going to be um, a much faster weight loss. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about the eating window. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm Jennifer and uh, I agree with everything that Andrea said. And uh, I find a difference um, in my health. If I don't fast, um, or it's a small fast, I always find that I get on better when I'm doing perhaps 20 hours on a regular basis, up to 24 hours. And um, I find it difficult myself to do uh, the 36 hours, but then I'm going to target weight anyway, so I haven't really got the incentive to have to do that. But I certainly can find a difference in myself. Um, uh, 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 you know, perhaps if I just do a 15-hour fast or a 16-hour fast, I much prefer myself personally doing between 20 and 24. Uh, one meal a day is very, very good, but sometimes I find it a little bit different, a little bit difficult to do one meal. Um, so then I reduce it back to two meals. But as long as I can do that 20-hour fast, and perhaps a 24, and then have, have something a bit extra, I feel happier um, doing that in myself and uh, my health. Mm 
that that's that's me. Treflin, you're you're muted, Treflin. Sorry. <laughs> right, there you go. Um my, my own experience of fasting uh, comes when I first started, and the reason that I began fasting was to cut down on the number of meals that I would be eating in the day. Um so it's a bit like if it's raining outside, the less times you go out outdoors, the less wet you're gonna get. And um I just because of my own weight and situation, circumstance, I just wanted to eat less food in a day. I didn't really understand the, the <clears throat> true benefits of fasting, but that was number one. And um, I saw it on YouTube um, and the benefits of, and they, they call it OMAD, O-M-A-D, one meal a day is the acronym for it. And I'm now in my fifth year. So I've, I've, I'm well used to only eating one meal a day and going beyond that. So I've, I've done 48 hours, 72, 96 hour fast. That's the most I've ever done. And I do see the weight coming off and I do feel a difference because when you're fasting, it gives your body a rest. And But the main thing is that I've learned since then is that <clears throat> it plays a massive, massive part in our lives. And I'm going to share the screen with you now. And this screen here shows the, um, the effect of the food that we eat on the insulin. So the insulin um, responds to blood sugar level. So if you eat carbohydrates, as you can see down the left-hand side here, blood sugar levels in, um, increase very, very quickly. And that, may, that draws on insulin to come and take the excess out of the blood to bring the blood down to the right level. The next food uh, group of proteins, while that does spike um, blood glucose levels, well, it's more an, an insulin, not as high as carbohydrates. And as you can see, the rate at which it rises is far, far less because carbohydrates cause it to spike very quickly. And certain carbohydrates <laughs> spike quicker than others, and that's called the glycemic index, the rate at which it climbs. But again, so if we go in on a neat fat, it does make a slight difference to the insulin, um, but hardly anything at all. So fat is a good thing to eat, um, but there are other reasons why we don't eat a lot of fat. So, but going back to fasting, so the less meal, the fewer meals we eat, the less effect it has on the insulin that's come that's being produced by the pancreas and coming into our bodies. Um, and and that that's that's something I've understood through fasting. And also, fasting really gives you a feeling of euphoria. And after 48 hours, um, a feeling of lightheadedness. And when you're fasting, you're using up all the glucose that's stored in your body. So you don't need to eat food because you've got enough food stored in your body as glycogen on your liver. And when those stores are depleted, then your body starts eating into the fat on your body and making ketones. Now, there's a lot of science I've given you here all in one go. But this is what we've learned over the years. And so that's that's how fasting helps me. And it's it's a tool that I use. And I choose to do it every day because it works for me. And I've kept my weight down now in my fifth year. Um, so that's why I fast. So um, it works for me. <laughs> I would I would like to comment on another aspect. Um, I had a blood draw this morning, a fasting blood draw. And so I have followed Megan Ramos's advice that for um, she says three to five days before you have a, a fasting blood draw, you should eat three meals a day. And that then when you're when you're um, blood draw the results of your blood draw are more normalized for the average uh, person uh, and so i'm i'm hopeful that by doing this i won't uh show that my um cholesterol is extremely out of whack um and my, and my doctor will not be insisting that i take uh, statin medications. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not fond of doing this because I am used to eating um, one meal, perhaps two meals or no meals a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I am much happier 
that way than than eating the three meals a day that it just it seemed like the second I finished with one meal I had to start thinking about another meal already and um, I have really gotten used to doing um, OMAD uh, or even longer fasts and uh, I, I much prefer that lifestyle. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. One of, one of the things you're actually saying then is that you're not eating three meals a day because it'll make you feel better. It's just stop your doctor having a go at you. It, it's because of the blood draw. Uh, Megan Ramos says that that will make your your uh, the results much uh, much better from your doctor's point of view. Yeah. Uh, so, so really, you, 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 you're tricking the system. Yeah. Yes. It, it's not. Yeah. It's not the, the the results of your blood as you as you are normally living your life. It's just to please them. Right now, if everybody, if everybody in my doctor's practice only ate once a day, then she would be used to to the kind of altered results yeah. that you see with with OMAD. Um, but that, of course, is not the case. <laughs> So, okay, thank you, mm -hmm. Louis. You've you've done some fasting in your time, haven't you, sir? Uh yes. Uh, <clears throat> for my for me, uh, the only way I've managed to lose any weight was by fasting. Uh, I discovered that watching uh, uh, Doctor uh, <clears throat> Fung's videos uh, some years ago and uh, g gave it a try and. And uh, it's worked. I, I mean, but I uh, have to keep doing it. I was I fasting on a regular basis, uh, uh, once one or two days a week, like thirty six or forty eight hours. And I try to uh, just uh, stay on liquids. Of course, I put uh, as he advises. I put some cream in my coffee. It seems to help me. Uh, <clears throat> and. Uh, Take some electrolytes, very important, uh, magnesium uh, and salt, of course, sodium, not too much potassium because uh, that can cause diarrhea. So uh, that's my that's been my practice. And uh, I must say it's helped me a lot. There, were, Whenever I see that the way it starts to pile up again, I just do another fast and bring it down. Sometimes not as much as I would like to because... Uh, it seems that the days after the fasting, I, I tend to be hungrier. So, but uh, it's been a good uh, practice for me. It, it's helped me a lot. Yeah. That's, 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 that is really, really good. I want to share another screen here for our viewers. Um, and I've got it, the benefit. Oh, hang on a second. I've seen Wildy. Wildy's come on. Hello, Wildy again. Um, so. Wildy. You thought to us about fasting while we please. I beg your pardon. I didn't mean to miss you out. We can't hear you, Aldi. You're muted. We're not here. You hear me now? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, so, uh, you... just, just, so before you start, just tell everybody your name and where you're from. Please. Yeah, uh, Valdemar. I am uh, from Iceland. Uh, not far from for Reykjavik. It's called Kopovor. And I usually take a one meal of day. Uh, I listen to Mr. Bird and uh, the ah, there's, there's another one was was about fasting and also and uh, you here. And I uh, usually yeah one meal a day. Usually I eat and uh, I find it uh, very good for my health and I more focus and I, I keep away from uh, bread and several things because I I am uh, you call a, a food attic <laughs> and uh, yeah that's a that's the main thing about me well yeah so so how how was how has fasting helped helped you how did you get into fasting what was it like for you the first time we did it can you remember yeah, uh, uh, I I find this very easy at first, but uh, uh, sometimes if I go off the road, 
if I can say that, then it's difficult to start again. But uh, I have two things. Uh, I have my family for support. I have you for support. And I look also, you can say, like a cat or something to and, uh, keep me going. So uh, when I fast, I drink water and, and, and coffee. And uh, yeah, uh, and uh, just eat one meal a day. It's, I like it very much. Is is two things about it. Is uh, one thing I don't have to think about food, and another thing is uh, I think clearly. And uh, yeah, I think it's it. <clears throat> Yeah, and, and another benefit of, of eating one meal a day is that you need you buy less food. There's less yeah. washing up to do. Yeah. yeah. I and, will be uh, a cheap one. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And if you extend your fast, then obviously you save <laughs> more money. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, I'm sure that's something we'd all like to do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Louis, yeah. Mentioned, Louis mentioned something which I think is important, and perhaps we can talk about that, and that was the importance of electrolytes because when I started um, – doing the fasting, I ended up with headaches. And you don't know, I didn't know what it was because obviously when you first start, unless somebody tells you these things, mm -hmm. you, you sort of think it's the worst. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they're called keto headaches, aren't they, Louis? Keto, yeah. Excuse me? They're called keto headaches when, you, when you're fasting. And you oh, yeah, yeah. Headaches. Yeah, keto flu or something. Uh, I don't really get that, but... Uh... Yeah, that's uh, they talk a lot about that the keto flu. That's mm -hmm. I guess that's when you first get in ketosis. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so you you, so. you mentioned about electrolytes, Louis. If you just put it into plain English for our viewers and listeners, please. Yeah, like I said, it's just mainly mm -hmm. uh, three main things: salt, very important, uh, lots of salt, up to uh, two teaspoons a day, with water. And the rest, uh, potassium, but not too much because you get diarrhea. And also magnesium, same thing, not too much because it can give you diarrhea. But salt is the most important, I think. Yeah. So, and and obviously, if you're having one meal a day, you can put all, you can choose the foods that that have got potassium and magnesium in them, and obviously put the salt yeah. in the food. And if you, I mean, I. Um, I put yeah. salt in coffee. Who else puts salt in coffee? I think Julie does. Yeah, yeah. I have as well. Yeah, we all do. Well, do. Just a pinch. Do you put salt in your coffee, well, they? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you don't have to put a lot in, just yeah. a little bit. It's all healthy. Yeah. Very good. When, when I'm saying, uh, when, I, when I'm saying two uh, teaspoons, I mean, uh, if you're, uh, if you're not, not having any meals at all, you know? Yeah. That would mm -hmm. be if you're only uh, drinking water. Then uh, I've read that you need about two teaspoons, you know, to to have yeah. enough energy. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I think one thing that that uh, Waldi mentioned that was really important too is the clarity that you get uh, when you're fasting or when you're on a low carb diet, because carbohydrates cause brain fog. And that's one thing we don't have anymore when we're on in ketosis or eating low carb and fasting. You don't have that, I don't know, that, that foggy thinking where you can't concentrate or uh, I don't know, you just, you, you just feel like you, you, your thinking is not um, the way it should be. And, and that yeah. just... Wait, it lowers just, uh, insulin, which is very important, you know. Yeah, yeah and, and, and obviously, I, I, I touched on that before. The insulin, the insulin in your body is, is that that's what causes the problems. It's a fat storage hormone, and there's no point in fasting if you're going to eat a lot of bread and and cakes and biscuits. You know that is just going to destroy it, really. You yeah. know, the whole point is to reduce the carbohydrate content of your meal. Yeah. And your stomach lining rebuilds itself every three days. And also make sure that the food that you're eating is suitable for your gut buddies. Those are the microbes in your stomach. 
you know, and that's why people post their meals on, on local authors so that people can see the kind of food that we're putting into our bodies, you know. We, we all slip up, you know, and I'm the first to put my hand up and say, I, I get it wrong. But I'm on a roll at the moment now. I'm on a good roll. I haven't had anything outside the box now for eight days, and my, I've lost nearly uh, uh, well over half a stone. You know, thank you, Louis. Yeah, good. thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, please. so I was going to comment that one thing we have not touched on is an, another main reason for fasting, and that is to um, cause your body to go into um, autophagy, where it is essentially recycling uh, broken or uh, bad cells and, and recycling, turning them back into something that our bodies need. And it, it helps uh, do all kinds of things inside that we aren't even aware of. Um, although, you know, I've, I've read about people who have based on their, their fasting, they, they will talk about their skin being clearer or uh, if we lose a lot of weight, then we, we, tend to have excess skin uh, because the fat under it has gone. And if you uh, if you do a lot of fasting over time, those skin cells will be kind of reabsorbed and reused. Um, and and so it's it's a, a wonderful reason to to fast along with losing weight. Uh, you know, yeah. it's just it's just very good for your whole system. Yeah. How's cleaning? Yeah, how's cleaning? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, it was it was and it was also um, I, I looked it up the other day, and it mentioned redundant cells. It recycles redundant cells, and yeah. it makes stem cells. Have you heard of people? They want the stem cell transplants, and they yeah. want the stem cell donor. Well, hey ho, start fasting, get into ketosis get into autophagy and make your own stem cells. Now, I saw um, a photograph of my, uh, I don't know why my wife took this photograph, but she asked me, oh, last year, was it maybe? She said, hold your hand out. I want to take a photograph of the back of your hand. I haven't got the original photograph, but I'm, I'm going to show you now. Um, those are my hands. I'm not, I don't have, I had a few, you know, the brown spots. I've only got one there and I've got very few here. But on the photograph my wife took, I had lots of these brown spots. And you get these when you're 21, like me. When you're 21, like me, you get these brown spots on here. But, they've, you know, my hands are pretty good, I think, for the geezer of my age. You know? <laughs> so, no, really. And, and, and yes. I, I, I put it down to fasting and autophagy. Really, truly do, honestly. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, can I um, look up and say as well, you talked about um, your glucose. But can I say that it's your glucose, it's the low blood sugar that works for you. Never mind about what you eat in, in your one meal a day. If you keep the, the carbs low and keep your sugar low, then you, 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 you'll find that that is the way to lose weight. It's the high blood sugar that actually puts on the weight. Not really the amount that you eat in a meal. So you must keep those carbs low. And the only way to do that is, is to have a low-carb meal. You know, leave your potatoes, your rice, your bread, and <clears throat> biscuits. Leave them alone. They stick to your vegetables and your, your meat or your fish. And, uh, and you, can, you can live... Very, very comfortable. Of course, having a low uh, uh, blood sugar takes you out of diabetes and, um, and you're a lot better in yourself. You've got no damage being done to your eyes and your feet and your limbs because it's the high carb meals that actually cause that. So that's why the low carb meals are very, very important. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. That's absolutely right. Um, you know, yeah. if you go to speak to your doctor, 
he'll say, oh, you're not supposed to starve yourself, eat a little and often. Um, and I'm going to say this, speaking as an expert, my doctor is not an expert on nutrition. He had half a day's training. My do doctor is not an expert on fasting. He's never done it. My doctor is not an expert on losing weight. He's never done it. My doctor yeah. is not an, an expert on autophagy. He's never been there. My doctor is not an expert on ketosis. He's never done it. So don't go to people who are giving you information that's not based upon evidence and experience. Now, I know we need our doctors and we need them to be do, doing and looking after us the right thing. But, you know, if, if you want to see a result in your weight and in your health, then trust me and everybody else who's speaking here now, that fasting and keeping the carbohydrates down, even if you only do one of those two things, it will make a difference to your life. The most important thing is cut the carbs. The second thing you can do to help you, it's a tool, is get onto, in, onto intermittent fasting. Yeah. Yeah. Lou is having a brew. Are you having a brew? <laughs> Having his salt. <laughs> so, yeah, I just uh, put some salt in water, and now I'm going to put some vinegar. So oh, give it a bit of taste. Thing. That's another thing we can talk about: apple cider vinegar. We'll, we'll be we'll be discussing this in more detail, uh, but that's something else yeah. that will help you as well. I don't have any, so I'm just using white vinegar. It yeah, still tastes the same. Amen. It does. Yeah, I'm I'm going to share another screen, and I'm going to make this available. Um, on one of the document pages on the group. Now, this screen here um, talks about the benefits of intermittent fasting and ketosis. And it says here, keto is an abbreviation of ketogenic. The local alpha eating program is based on the principles of being in ketosis. So the keto diet is meant to put us in a state of ketosis where our bodies produce, produce ketones to replace glucose for its energy. So the benefits of being in ketosis is that our bodies produce ketones when it starts using up the fat reserves on our body, which is how we lose weight, which is why we say cut the fat out on your plate so that you can make the ketones from the fat on your body. And being producing ketones aids in weight loss. It takes more work to turn fat into energy than it takes to turn carbohydrates into energy. It reduces acne. It may help reduce risk of cancer. It improves heart health, may protect brain functioning, potentially reduces seizures because the ketogenic diet was, was um, designed to treat children with epilepsy way back in the 1920s in the previous century. It improves health in women with PCOS, and that's polycystic ovary syndrome. It's a condition that affects a woman's hormone levels. And few things are as well established in nutrition science as the immense health benefits of a low-carbon ketogenic diet. Not only can these diets improve your cholesterol, which we don't go there, blood pressure and blood sugar, but they also reduce your appetite, boost weight loss, and lower your triglycerides. And that's something else that the doctors will be talking to you about when you get your blood tests. So the benefits of intermittent fasting is that it boosts weight loss, it increases energy. It's short-term fasting actually increases your metabolic rate by 3.6 to 14%, helping you to burn even more, forget the word calories, but use up more of your body's fat. It promotes cellular repair, repair through autophagy when your body consumes defective tissue in order to produce new parts. Who doesn't want new parts? It reduces insulin resistance and protects against type 2 diabetes. It increases human growth hormone by up to five times. It lowers bad cholesterol. We won't go there. It promotes longevity, so I'm up for that. And so, you know, this, these benefits are all there for everybody, everybody to use. Um, there's, also, uh, there's also the spiritual advantages, you know, which... Uh... We should mention too. Rick. Yeah, you you go down that road. Yeah, because I hundred percent agree with you there. Please speak on that, Louis. Well, I'm just saying that uh, it clears up your uh, not only your mind but your soul. You know, so you can be get closer to God and and 
have a better spiritual perspective on life, you know, because we are spiritual beings and and uh, being uh, eating too much gets in the way of our spiritual life. So uh, that's why uh, fasting has always been important in religion, you know, it's, most religions and certainly in the Christian one. It's mentioned 77 times in the Bible, Louis. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, uh, <clears throat> and you can see in the Acts of the Apostles, you know, before they they're doing something important, they would fast for a couple of days there. And, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1, says that we shouldn't contaminate our body with anything. And, and sugar, an overindulgence in sugar and, and carbohydrates contaminates our body because it causes problems for us. You know? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, sugar is a recent invention. But, but, but can I just... Uh, yeah, can I just say... That the nicest thing, one of the nicest things that I find with fasting is it's nice not to be hungry. You know, you wake up in the morning when, you, when you're off food and you, you've been a bit naughty perhaps, um, not having the wrong food, but perhaps having too much, perhaps having three meals instead of one or two, and, and then you've got to get back on. But the, the, the sad thing is, is if you have breakfast, uh, it, then you're wanting dinner. And then because you've had breakfast and lunch, you're wanting an evening meal as well. But really, that doesn't really satisfy you even then. You're still wanting more. So it, <clears throat> it's lovely to feel full up. And uh, 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 to be in it and, and to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Have, the I'm more you eat, the more you want to eat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's true for everybody. It's not just me, it's everybody. If you speak to anybody, they'll all say the same. It's just no satisfying your hunger. You know, I mean, you, you might control it a little bit, but you're, even though you control it, it's hard work. Yeah. Because you're looking and you're thinking, then what can I have for lunch? So you're all the morning getting everything prepared. And then when you've had that, you think, well, what can I have for my meal now? Oh, and this is how it goes. Yeah. 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 And car carbohydrates yeah. are the worst. Carbohydrates oh, promote more eating of carbohydrates. It's like yeah. a drug. Carbohydrates are a drug. Yeah, That's, they are. They yeah. are, and those yeah. are carbohydrates. Yeah, they raise yeah. your blood sugar, and then you produce yeah. insulin, and then yeah. uh, your sugar goes down, and then you get hungry again. You get on yeah. the bandwagon, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. this roller coaster. Yeah, roller yeah. coaster. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's true. why I, 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 I that's why I can't eat one biscuit. No. Yeah. I right. can only eat yeah. a packet. Yeah. That's why mm -hmm. I can't have bread in the house. Yeah. No. Yeah. I can't eat one slice of bread. Yeah. You know, eat it until it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and some yeah. people say that's good. That's good that you can't eat a slice of bread, but I like it. You can only eat a loaf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but it's the same same with potato or, or rice. I mean, you can yeah. have these things in, in very, very small portions. Perhaps say only fifty or, or, or seventy five grams of potatoes, but if you put that on your plate, it's nothing. Yeah. Uh, and you, yeah. you, but you want more. Uh, to me, I would rather yeah. not have it at all. I it must just, say, but the... I, I must say that I have, I don't have an addiction to certain carbs. So there's. Um, like potatoes, I don't have an addiction to potatoes or like squash or anything like that. But wheat, oh boy, yeah. you know, I I can eat half a little potato and I won't think about potatoes again. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not even it, it, they can sit on my counter forever um, until then. I decide I better eat them up. But a loaf of bread or anything with wheat in it, it's, yeah, it's deadly for me. Yeah. You know, so being on maintenance, um, I can eat a little bit of carbs now and then, 
and it doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect my weight and it doesn't make me want more. But if I have bread, I'm, I'm done for. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think this I is think something that uh, most people don't understand because, uh, you know, uh, Carbs are a staple. Like some people uh, eat mostly, and that's what the doctors tell you to eat your yeah. bread, your, eat your uh, eat your potatoes. You know, that yeah. should be the basis of your diet. It's yeah. crazy, crazy. It is crazy. We, yeah. we we have a thing here in the. So they're making us sick. You know? They're making people sick. Yes. yes. Very sad. Yeah. It's killing their patients. Yeah. Yeah, and and fruit fruit is the same. Oh, yeah. it, it, it raises your blood sugar. It's uh, yeah, no. yeah, not as yeah. much because of the fiber, but it still does. It still does, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, who can have a bowl of cherries on the counter and eat just one or two cherries? Really? Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can. You're going to no, eat the whole no. bowl, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to share the screen, and this is called the Eat Well Plate. And this is oh, what they have in the UK. Um, <laughs> so it says, what is the Eat Well Guide Plate? It's a visual representation of how different foods and drinks can contribute towards a healthy, balanced diet. No. No, that's right. The Eat Well Guide is based on the five food groups and shows how much of what you eat should come from each group. So yeah. let me just, for the benefits of our viewers let me just uh increase the magnification on my screen here so we can see this let me just make it bigger yeah i can't really uh, yeah. see it because i'm on a phone there okay um so let me just see if, if there's a bigger image of it no let me just go back let me yeah, go back, back. It's on the computer i'll go, I'll go back to eat well, right? eat well place i'll just go back to images okay this this is the eat well plate and this is uh, this is one for children. Okay. You can buy it for children, right? You know, uh, but it's misinformation. Yeah. And and this is what the health service. So therefore, most of that there, as you can see, um, a guide to the right balance. So therefore, we want you to have all that bread and potato, right? Cut down on your on your fat. No reason for that. Um, yeah. Plenty of greens and only a little bit of protein. And you can have cola and cakes down the bottom there. Look, you can have those oh, like candy and chocolate and yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's and, yeah. I mean, that's just going to throw us all off our uh, our game. Let's face it. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. that's that's what the government in this country, the National Health Service here, is advocating. And obviously, it's not good advice, and that. Oh, this is terrible to say. A friend of mine, he was going to join us on Local Oath last year, and he said he decided to join Weight Watchers. And oh. uh, I, got, I got a message today saying he's oh. been admitted to hospital with a heart attack. Oof. <laughs> it's sad. That's what Weight Watcher will do to you. <laughs> yeah, it certainly didn't help him. So we've been praying for him, you know, Louis. I think, I think calories. Yeah. I think we've all been there. We've all done. I used, to buy, uh, I used to buy bread there with slices, half of slices, you know? Yeah. Sliced about uh, one centimeter thick. Yeah. Little tiny slices. Yeah. <laughs> That's why <Yeah>. watchers. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, bread is bread. It doesn't matter how thin the slice. I'll still eat the whole loaf. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I mean... Uh, Counting calories doesn't work, you know. No, it's a waste of time. There's no such thing as a calorie. No such thing. Well, even if there yeah. is, it doesn't work. Well, there's no such thing, Louis, really, because all they do is set fire to food and they measure the amount of heat that food gives off and they convert that into yeah. calories and they say you're eating too many. How can you eat the results yeah. of a laboratory experiment? It doesn't say uh, how fast they're transformed, you know, like uh, how much sugar they put in your blood. It doesn't say yeah. that. Yeah. But 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 I would say that <laughs> when you see that plate, if you were on calories, you would be well over three thousand calories in a day, easy. And, and, and they're they're telling you one thing, you know, to count calories, and then they're giving you that plate which is full of calories. 
-hmm. Yes, if calories exist, there the is one, one, one contradicts the other. It's uh, uh, good point. You know, good point. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, the, the, part with the, the part with the fruit and veggies is not too bad, except for the, yeah, I guess, the starchy fruit. Well, and that's what add the fruit, and then down the bottom, yeah. you've got the cake and the chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. See, so it says here a calorie yeah. is a unit that is used right. to measure energy. Uh, the calorie you see in the food package is as. The amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water one degree Celsius. So how can you eat yeah. a measurement? Of, how can you eat that? You can't eat it's a measurement of heat. No. It's yeah. absolute it's junk. It's total garbage. You know, anyway, yeah. never mind. We're not here to talk about calories. But we're just trying yeah. to provide people with the right information. Basically, when you're talking about calories, you're really talking about the quantity of food that you're eating in you know either in carbs or fat or or protein or or whatever um but when you cut out the carbs you can eat a lot of food yeah you you know yeah. you, it, the carbs are the problem yeah 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 you just gotta have to watch it not to eat too much fat because yes. your body will, will burn the fat that you give it instead of your own fat you know if you eat yeah. too much fat yeah. yeah, we don't want to be drinking the bulletproof coffees with, you know, a lot of fat in them, cream and butter and whatever they put in the bulletproof coffee or that kind of thing or topping your steak with butter and, and so on. Because steak comes with all the fat you need. Chicken comes with all the fat you need. Don't, you, you know, don't throw away the skin. Oh, no, don't do that. So, uh, yeah. yeah. That, that's Eat good advice, you know. Food. Yeah. Uh, I'm eating mostly hamburger meat now because it's cheaper and uh, it's got uh, enough fat in it. Yeah. yeah. You'll be fine. So, yeah. You don't need to add anything to that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need eat to add. Egg with the yolk. Like, you know, like people who just eat egg whites, I think, are, are insane. There's a thing yeah. called a carnivore diet, you know, and yeah. people on that fun i've been watching some of them you know they of course you it's not there's not much variety but uh, people can thrive on just eating meat you know yeah. yeah yeah well look at the inuit yeah of course yeah well not now but uh they used to yeah they still yeah. eat quite a bit but when they can have it there's lots of fish that can. so they're having a lot of fish right now because yeah. uh the meat is not always available, you know. The caribou is sometimes very far away, and, and well, uh, but uh, here, here in this place, they uh, they've been killing a lot of uh, polar bears, so that's good meat too. Never tried it. Never tried it. Well, did, yeah, did, you, did you eat more fish I or more fish, yeah. 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 Anyway, so what, what fish do you eat? Oh, no. Just all, the, uh, all of them. It's all of them. Yeah. yeah. I am. I am seeing your fishy meal for a while. The last one you had was the big board that like, you put up with all the bits on it. Send some pictures to Wildy, please. Put some yeah. of the meals on. Yeah, I will. Yeah, uh, here on the west coast, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. The, I I will sh show you the next time what fish we are eating. And how how do you cook your fish? Do you fry it, or do you put it in the oven, or do you make a pie, or or, or do you... all of this? <laughs> All of this. <laughs> You're not giving Try all of this. Sometimes we eat it raw. <laughs> you eat it raw? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, so, yeah like, sushi. Oh, sashimi. Yeah. Sushi, yeah. yeah. Sashimi. Yeah. So, yeah. so which fish do we eat raw, Wildy? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a fish uh, far away from the uh, coast. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Deep water. Oh, deep is water. It... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The the, the native um, Canadians here on the west coast. I mean, they they thrived on fish. There was so much salmon here. It was just like you could almost walk on the salmon. You know, it was so much salmon and the. Ulican, um 
little fishes that they made the oil from and whatever. It was a very heavy seafood based diet here on the coast, you know, but I mean, now salmon is so expensive, you know, they've, the waters have been commercially fished to the point of almost extinction. Yeah, but now they have farm salmon, ain't it? They sell a lot of that too. Yeah. That's a big problem. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, there's not getting good reports, but okay. So, yeah. As, before we before we close the meeting, does anybody else want to say anything about fasting for our viewers or viewer? It's good. You okay? It's good. Yeah, it's good. Good. Try it. Okay. Try it. So, it's good for you. Yeah, try it. Yeah, give yeah. it a go. You know, give it a go. Yeah, and it, it just fast for one day. Say, I'm not going to have a meal. Just cut out your breakfast, like Andrew says, or cut out your evening meal. Just cut one meal out, and then see how you feel. Measure yourself daily. And so we'll have a different topic next week. Um, so we did have a list of topics, and I can't remember what I did with the list, which is not good, really, is it, when you think about it? Um, so we can talk about choosing the, 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 the correct low carbohydrate foods, can't we? Yes. Is that okay? For next yes. Week? For next yeah. week? Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Good. Okay. It's good to share, yeah. too, our... Yeah, because I've trusted even your vegetables. You know, people think that carrots and turnip and all your underground veg, but natural right. fat, no, all those are high in carbohydrates. Yeah, but we'll cover this all, in all, detail. All your, your, you know, that needs to be addressed. Yeah, we'll cover this in detail next week. Yeah, and that needs to be addressed, yeah. Okay, guys. Yes. yes. Okay, then. All right, so okay. thank you very much indeed for joining us today. We've had a good nice hour. Nice to see you all. Aldi, thank okay, you. Okay, have a good day. Thank you so much, Louie. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, you. thank you. Thank you. See you next week. Have a see see week. you next week. Have, have a nice. good week. Yeah, bye now. Bye. 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 So there you have it. That was our first Zoom meeting where you can get some really really good advice from people who have experienced fasting and can relate to it and share the benefits of fasting with you so we hope that you'll join us and watch our next video which we'll, we will um, be recording next Monday afternoon in the meantime we're still having our local offer support group meeting at 9am on Wednesday morning so please come and join us on there if you're able to all right, take care. God bless you all in your house. Bye now. If you're watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell so you don't miss out on our future videos.